don't aim to be better than your competitor because your marketing will just be like, we're better than them. It's like, that's a pretty big promise. Aim to be different. Matt Purcell, TEDx speaker. And the personal branding sensei. Working with top brands to elevate their personal branding and marketing strategies. But was he always this lucky? So when my parents separated when I was six, it was messy. So my mum moved 13, 14 times as a kid, when I was a kid, and she had the envelope system where she'd get her Centrelink payments and from maintenance from the dad and put the cash into the rent envelope, the shoes envelope, the food envelope. And I saw that as a young six-year-old guy going, I am stressed out of my skull that we don't have enough. I went to a new school and I was bullied for being Asian and for being little and new. So I never let money or lack of resource or a label get in the road of what I want. My only limitation with my whole life is, can I imagine it? And if I can imagine it, then I will get there. There's really three things I believe that people aren't successful. There's one. Today we're excited to host Matt Purcell, a man who has redefined the essence of branding and personal development. Born in South Korea and raised amidst challenges, Matt overcame adversity to become an influential figure in Australia's branding and entrepreneurial landscape. Founding KYU Media and co-founding the Business Academy with Boost Juice Janine Ellis, he's reshaped business narratives and ignited exponential growth. What fueled Matt's journey from adversity to award-winning success? Stick around as we uncover Matt's inspiring journey. And don't forget, if you're interested in growing wealth through townhouse development, check out the Little Fish Network. You get coaching, expert access, and community support. It's essentially everything you need to win at property and development. Use the discount code POD20. See you guys in there. Welcome back to Australia's number one podcast. We are the Little Fish, and we speak to the big fish about town each and every week. Please, guys, remember, for every subscribe, follow, or review in 2024, we're donating $1 to EB, our amazing charity. Epidemolus Belosa. Oh, I thought you were going to get me to do it then. You gave no. me a nudge. Yeah, well, I gave you a nudge because <laughs> I said EB first. And I haven't done it for a while. Yeah, Epidemolosis Belosa. Yeah, that wasn't bad. Give that a B plus. Worst <laughs> disease you've never heard of. If you want to make a bigger splash, littlefishpodcast.com.au, the pink button. Worst disease you've never heard of. We're going to find a cure. 2030, we're rocketing towards, guys. So get behind it. Love it. Absolutely, man. Let's do it. Yeah, thanks, Benny. <laughs> thanks for your input. <laughs> yeah, well, you, know, you, you nailed it. You know what? I was about to call Matt Nathan then. Thanks to That you. was my fault, yeah. yeah but I did. <laughs> Planted myself. a shocking seed here. Well, I'm, I'm actually at peace with Matt now, to be no, honest. No, no, I reckon, I reckon <laughs> Matt's, turned. Matt's well, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, we spent a bit of time together. I'm at peace with it. Yeah, <laughs> Matt's sure a good fit. Mate, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having us, boys. It's awesome. It's, um, mate, looking at doing the research, all that sort of stuff, there's... Yeah, there's a bit of bit of depth to this story, you know. There's, you know, you've come a long way to be here, uh, and now you're doing amazing things. So, could you be able to sort of get our community up to speed on, you know, where you're from, and and you know, somewhat what that journey was like to, you know, get to this great country and start kicking goals? Yeah. So, if people were just listening to my voice, they wouldn't be able to tell that I'm an Asian man, like because. If, you close, if I close my eyes, I think I'm like a I'm blonde head. I'm testing it now. Yeah, what, what do I look like, boys? Now go. If you didn't see my Asian face. Yeah, right, little voice. blonde surfer. Yeah, little blonde <laughs> surfer. That, that's what I was picturing as well. <laughs> that's what I thought as well. And um, yeah, so as, as when I was old enough to understand, I looked at myself in the mirror and then I looked at my mum and dad and thought, I've been kidnapped. <laughs> because my dad looks like Bill Clinton and my mum looks like Hillary. And I'm like, I look like Jackie Chan's son. And I'm like... What the f- <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's the Jackie? honest truth. Jackie? <laughs> dad, dad, where are you? <laughs> and then I grew up in Newcastle. So that's a big country town, two hours north from Sydney. Newcastle Knights, Newcastle Jets, all this, that's where we come from. And so I was adopted. Newcastle was Osteopathy, shout out Huffy, Dr. Russell Huff. Yes, <laughs> newly. friend of mine. <laughs> Nervicastrians, we call them. And so I was told very early on, I mean, through force, that the reason why you don't look like us is because you're adopted and my parents couldn't have biological kids so they waited four years to adopt a kid and it was me and they adopted my sister who's not my biological sister she's from taiwan and it didn't bother us at all like really didn't bother us like sometimes we walked down the shop and i could see the eyeballs looking at us going that looks a bit odd two asian little kids holding white people's hands because it wasn't normal and I did hear the Morse code. They'd be like, little boy, are you okay? I'm like, 
yes, no, help me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, it didn't bother me until my parents separated when I was six. So when my parents separated when I was six, it was messy. So my mum moved 13, 14 times as a kid, when I was a kid. And she had the envelope system where she'd get her Centrelink payments and from maintenance from the dad and put the cash into the rent envelope, the shoes envelope, the food envelope. And I saw that as a young six-year-old guy going, I am stressed out of my skull that we don't have enough. And sometimes we never did have enough. And I went to a new school that same year of the divorce and I was bullied for, for weeks from several year six kids outnumbered for being Asian and for being little and new. And um, I was thrown in whiz bins and bruised and battered. And then my dad put me into martial arts lessons to defend myself. And then I thought, cool, I'm just gonna Jackie Chin him on the head now. <laughs> and I started doing it and I realized I can't just Will Smith people in the face when everyone would say something bad to me because the physical building stopped when the school got involved. But I realized at a very early age, being exposed to need and being exposed to um, bullying, that I was on my own. Like my mum can't come on the bus. I can't hire a security guard. Like no one can come with. So I had to be, some people would look at young people or someone who's making their own lunch at six years old, trying to earn money for his mum at under the age of 10 and go, he's so self-efficient, but it's survival. On the outside, it looks like savviness. Internally, it's just, I'm doing this because I need to. And that's where this entrepreneurial drive came from, I think in my life. I mean, one last quick story, this shows me, this tells me, like my mum told me this story, I forgot about it. It was year seven or year eight camp and we couldn't afford to send me to boys camp. It was like, a, my dad put us in a Christian school, but we still have to pay for camps. And she's like, I can't afford to pay 120 bucks to go to camp. I'm like, what, can we borrow the money? And she's like, no, nah, I'm not gonna beg your uncles or anything for that. You just, sometimes in life, you just gotta let it go. So I went to my school principal as a year seven kid and went, I want a payment plan. <laughs> like this, this, I'll do whatever it takes. Just send me to camp. And he rang my mum up, going, "I've got a concerning thing from your your son. Let, let us uh, come and have a meeting." And he said, "Matt, what are you willing to do to be able to come to camp?" And I got to give it to the principal. He was pretty switched on. I said, "Well, I'll do whatever it takes. Like I'll wash the toilets for a week." He's like, "Done." And I'm like, "Cool." So I wash the toilets for a week and earn my way to camp. So I never let money or lack of resource or a label getting the road of what I want. My only limitation with my whole life is, can I imagine it? And, and if I can imagine it, then I will get there. Don't give me an excuse, I'll find a way. So that's kind of my background, adopted, rejected. Resilience, man, it's, you know what, some of the most successful, and I probably don't need to tell you this, but that's, that's you know, a trait of, the, a lot of the most successful people because it builds resilience, right? It, it, it makes you understand that life isn't easy. Life's a bitch and, and you've got to take it on. Mm -hmm. You can't outsource certain things. Like you can't outsource your resilience or your toughness or your exams or your income and all that stuff. Like to, to a degree, you can get guided. You know, a good guide can tell you that's dangerous, don't go there. But you can't outsource your well-being. You know, because then you become dependent on external factors, validation. And basically, if you have no inner internal validation of, I, oh, this is what I want, this is where I want to go, then you're just everyone's. They'll just be like, mate, you look like you should do this, career advisor, you should go there. And you're like, I guess it's the only data point I have. That I, I, I'll do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's deep, but that's what I am. That's what helps me with my work is actually depth actually has helped me land some of the biggest clients I've ever wanted to work with and do some really fulfilling work. You are doing some crazy shit, which we're going to be excited to unpack. <laughs> Isn't that right? Yeah, like you are. You really are, man. And, and it's going to be fascinating to understand how, how you got into some of these rooms and, and, and um, yeah, to build the businesses because I think we were talking before, you've got the triad of businesses, right? So it's going to be, yeah, interesting of how you've been able to go from where you just, that we we're just explaining then to where you are today, which is pretty crazy. Mm. On the morning show, what, last week? Yeah. <laughs> you know, funny. if you're on the morning show, you're going, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Matt, Matt, that's awesome, man. And yeah, an incredible story of, you know, resilience. You know, those years would have been long, but they would have toughened your skin up for what, what probably laid ahead. Mm. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I think resilience is one of those, it's like the R word that gets, it's become a bit of a, buzzword isn't it oh you gotta become more resilient and we all agree that it's important 
but resilience is built through um, exposure to hard things. Like in Japanese adversity, ph- adversity. Yep. Like in, Jap- in in Japanese philosophy, in order to become a master in something, you you seek out a worthy opponent. So that's why you hear in a lot of movies, it's like, give me a worthy death. Like the best person's always seeking, they're, they're bored if they can't find something to take them on. And if we want to be masters at life, I mean, we, it's funny to, to want adversary to come to you. You want tough things to come to you. No one goes, I want to wake up in the morning and get punched in the head. Hmm. But you got to, if you, if you avoid that altogether, then you, you deny yourself access to be able to be in certain rooms that requires you to be able to handle the heat. Mm. You know, the old saying is you can't handle the ki- you can't handle the heat get out of the kitchen mm. so like if you want to get to the top or if you want to be amongst people who are just as ambitious everyone wants these certain slots wherever you are in life the obstacles the way right like yeah well it it builds that toughness over time doesn't it so when that opportunity does arise and that door opens you're ready mm. you're ready to do that rather than maybe a door opening it's like oh shit no no way yeah. I can't go in there I can't get in the kitchen no way yeah. By you, but it sounds like you were ready. So you went to school, you know, you built all that up. You know, where did you go from there? Were you, you know, with the, you know, the old, you know, selling this, selling that. <laughs> you know, got the stalls sort of thing. Always entrepreneurial. How can I spin a dollar? You know, you know, was that you or? Yeah. So I had got given a guitar when I was twelve, and up to that point, I was just mucking around with cricket and soccer and and didn't have much going for me other than that but music really spoke to me i actually got really good at music and discovered that i was quite creative through music um could hear something on the radio with m- not much training and know what key it was in and mm. look at a movie and be able to reverse engineer and re- replicate that and i thought that was normal for everyone and as you go on in life you realize wow like i think what my normal is it's abnormal to other people it might be my gift my transferable gift and so I, I went all in on music through school and I actually started my first little biz when I was 15, teaching my English teacher guitar at lunchtime. He's like, I'll give you 20 bucks a lesson. I'm like, 20 bucks a lesson? That's 40 bucks an hour. That's sick. And that kicked me off to be able to go, oh, I'm doing guitar lessons, teaching all these primary school kids. You know, at like 16, I was earning a few hundred bucks a week mm. teaching guitar. Cash. Cash. <laughs> yeah. Asians love a couple of things. <laughs> <laughs> we love... We love causing accidents in the road. <laughs> we love cash. And if your cat's gone missing. <laughs> <laughs> it's at my place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. So entrepreneurial from a young age, you know, talk to us, you know, when you started, I guess, expanding into sort of bigger businesses and things like that. You know, how did you, you know, was that, you know, those lessons you learned early on, were they just evident, you know, the way you... I guess, approach people and never took no for an answer and, you know, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I think I actually learnt personal branding is a very buzzword right now, a very hot word right now. And I discovered the power of it when I was obsession muso going through high school. So I realised this, that I needed a certain skill level to be eligible to be chosen to play behind a band. Like I did a couple of tools with Jimmy Barnes as a guitarist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I good friends i supported thirsty merc and a whole bunch of cool they're all friends of mine now and i realized that there are guitarists that can play the four chords of these songs like it doesn't take you need at least a skill level to enter the room but what it's not my ability that just got me chosen i realized it was my likability that got me chosen so when everyone literally looks at so in business every cafe opens at every cafe literally has avocado smash espresso mm-hmm. they all have the same exact menu so why the hell should I go to them or ever the other one? You can't just compete on just the menu. You've got to be competing on what makes you different, what makes you more approachable or makes you likable. That's why customer service is so important and all this stuff. So I realized this as a young bloke that it was my likability that kept me in the room. My skill, my ability got me in the room and I was up against all these people. So I started like making sure that I reverse engineered from the decision maker. What do they need to see of me to trust me? And that's all part of personal branding. It's not just about, here's my resume skills. It's like, do I trust this bloke? Do I like this guy? I, I might have this guy around. If Whoever I choose, I'm going to see every day. So I want to make sure that I'm that guy that you can rely on. So head, heart, and hands. 
So you've got to have the head for strategy and problem solving. You've got to have the heart of attitude and character, and that's good. And you've got to have the skills with the hands. So I realized that competing with everybody, personal branding was a big key for that to be chosen. And then as I was on the road, I was like 20 or something like that, I realized I'm not, make, I'm not going to be able to buy a house doing this. Like, it's so sporadic. <laughs> so I started a school, and I realized um, from my music teaching background, I was like, wow, I've got all these students, and I just doubled down on that and hired people from conservatoriums, session museos. And I realized being one-on-one -on -one with kids through my tuition kids were broken in front of me and music was their escape but also they needed a mentor they needed young, like a, a big brother and I became that big brother and I was like man there's more to life than just marketing and music I actually want to help people so that's where I discovered my heart for kids and I built that up we had three campuses uh, 600 families a week 40 plus staff sold it a few years ago um, but it all started from high school yeah and that's where I started, you know, within that vehicle of the business, you know, Facebook, MySpace, all that stuff. Whatever was around, I'm like, attention so important. I knew that from a very young age um, because you, could be, you can't save souls in an empty church. So you could be the best kept secret and be the best singer, best product. Um, you could be the best real estate developer in the world, but if no one knows you, you're useless. Mm. You're absolutely useless if no one knows you. And you learned that from a young age by the sounds of it you joined I, the dots i joined the dots very early on i need attention in not an attention seeking way but you have to be seen and heard to be chosen it's just as simple as that yeah yeah i think that's super important plenty of people out there might have the skill set work on the skills in you know during the night early in the mornings all that sort of stuff but when you get out there you need people to buy into you and you know like you said be likable want to have you around uh, yeah, I think it's a massive one. I think that's nearly more important, that likability factor, want to have them around, yeah. than even the skill set. Like we've worked on work sites, tradies, all that sort of stuff, and the way you put on that architrave, if you're a good bloke, good to have a beer with at the end of the day, yeah. enjoyable, you're with them 10 hours a day, I'll teach you how to put the arc on, mate. You're, you're, you're a good guy. Well, think about the love and grace that you extend to people that you like. Mm. So if something, some bad news comes about, about someone that you like, what are you going to do? You're going to defend them. You're going to give them, you're going to be like, no, I'm going to find reasons to like them. Yeah. Versus someone who's a punish, but they're good at what they do. You're like, oh yeah, he's a dick, but like, he's okay what he does. Yeah. Yeah. So you're right. Like likability is totally underrated, but we've been focusing so much on online around how to fill the gap, how to build this, how to do that. And it's like, building this idea of human doings on human beings yeah it people will pay to have the right teachable spirit around yeah i love that and is that you know you said you just build a school educational you know 600 people 40 people 40 people working there you know is that what was the messaging in that you know did you use yeah. that platform to to sort of inspire people in that way yeah it's that like likeability thing i'm a big believer in that no matter where you're at in life you might go, um, uh, you just got to use what's in your hand. Like um, Moses in the Bible used a rod in his hand to be able to convince Pharaoh to let his people go. It's just a rod, right? And I used my music school. Mm. And I realized that there's other competitors again, just like with session musos on cafes. How do I get chosen across the board when we offer similar services? In the principle in Business Academy we talk about, with Janine Alice, who's a business partner of mine, we talk about don't aim to be better than your competitor because your marketing will just be like, we're better than them. We, our, our service is far superior. It's like, that's a pretty big promise. Aim to be different. Don't try to be... Don't be better, be different. Try Not try to be like... I'm not saying be mediocre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. saying let your brand and marketing be all about how different you are to everyone. And our branding was instead of we're going to help your kids get from grade one to grade nine, we said we're just like family. That's our brand. Because we recognize that we're the big brothers and sisters of the city and music's one of those healthy shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder exercises. So we narrowed in on mentoring with something versus the primary being music and achievement. That was secondary. Mm -hmm. And there's a place in the market for stuff like that. There's a place in the market for the reject shop and there's a place in the market for JB High Five and the JP, there's a place in the market for high on dyes and Bentleys. So you just got to find your point of difference. Yeah, 100% love that. Like the 
you're doing the music here. Plenty of people are doing the music. You go, yeah, we can do the music like the rest of them, but this is this is what we shine a light on. Mm-hmm. Something Sound, else be different. Sounds like a lot of what you do is you build rapport with people. How's what's something that you like to do just personally when you know you first meet someone and how do you build that rapport and gain that that level of trust and you know that shoulder to shoulder like you speak of? I ask us to exchange stories. Like tell me about where you came from and about your struggle as a kid. And and it takes people back because it's like, well, how's that relevant to what we we're doing? And to my view, it's it's at it's every port it's it's really important to know where you came from. As uh, who am I working with here? And we exchange I usually go first and share my story and it opens up a a vulnerability. And it's not a tactic, it's just I think how we connect. I I struggle to connect with people who just go, Oh, here are my trophies. Let's just let's just show our trophies to each other. Mm-hmm. Mine's bigger than yours. It's like it's a really hard to relate. Dick swinging contest. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like my dick's bigger than this. Yeah, because I'm Asian. I got, I got <laughs> <laughs> Mine works. <laughs> but rapport is important. Like humanizing marketing, humanizing your client, humanizing it. Like, because we can, in business, just so much take it away from the emotion and go, and you got to with decision making sometimes. But when you go, oh, yeah, male between 34 and 45 in the eastern suburbs and blah, 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 it's a high level thing. But at any one moment, when someone's watching your video, it's just one person at your screen experiencing what they're seeing at a one time. Yeah, so we always bring it back down to the person. Even when I'm speaking on stage to, to people, I'm like, always think about the person who's in the seat, not the thousands or the hundreds. So the, so the school, the academy, or not the academy, but the school, the, the music school you had, so you moved away from that? Yeah, I've sold that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that... It sounds like there was a lot of passion in in that, you know, in that school that you created. Was that a hard, hard thing? Yeah, it was really hard. Um, you know, and some of the best memories of my life so far, I reckon, forever. And I think I discovered a lot about my my purpose in that school. And um, it it didn't die. Like uh, it, what it birthed in me was what we're working on now. One of the three businesses I have is. Um, education company called Social Kung Fu that came from that school yeah. it came from being in the trenches with helping hundreds of kids a week and knowing that um, I've helped save kids lives on the edge of suicide like, yeah yeah I love that it's yeah that's that's sort of where I was going it's obviously not obviously but yeah what you've seen and the enjoyment and fulfillment that you had through that now is launching you off into other areas can you talk about talk about where it's taken you yeah it's just interesting how when we look at someone's timeline right now, presently, even though they look at you boys, it's just like you've just landed here. We just have this awful assumption in Australia or in the West of, um, yeah, that didn't, well, you just always have been doing what you're doing at this level. And life is like a heart meter. It's up and down. And that's what makes you laugh. If you're flatline, you're dead. Hmm. And, and with, with my school, I realized, like, I was actually, when we sold it, I felt sad. And I was told, you know what? You, sh- you did a program in school that really helped a lot of kids. It was the, the roughest kids in the city. And it was helping with bullying. And that's what you went through. And you should look at that. And through COVID, I actually built that program. And it's now being researched by the University of Sydney by the top psychologist in Australia, Professor Carolyn Hunt. And it will be the first evidence-based program for verbal self-defense in Australia soon. For a kid who actually, I got an, I got an asterisk for my HSC, meaning my mark was so low, they give you an asterisk. I got one of them too, yeah. Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Exactly. Actually, what it was, back in my day, I'm a bit older, they used to do greater than or less than. And mine was yeah, like- less than 30. <laughs> mine, no, no, less than 10. So, less than 10. So you got, the, I got the, you got the less than 10 sign. Hey, I'm fucking here. Doesn't no, matter no, where no, you sorry, no, no, no. Right? Look no, at me no. now. No, well, what, no. When I went through it, you had to. If you got less than thirty, you had to pay to find out your score. Oh bullshit! Yeah. <laughs> what? They find you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now mine had the, the less than, sold in the womb. Yeah, mine had the less than symbol and a ten next to it. But hey, doesn't matter where you start, Maddie. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so uh, from that, at birth, this this desire to take all what I've learned from the the those campuses and put into a nice compilation of something that doesn't require me to be in every school. The app's being built in Europe at the moment. It's um, Once it's evidence-based, we'll be submitted to the government because it's on a register of, of, of only elite few courses that actually are evidence-based. And 
the whole idea is we want to impact a million students across Australia and across the world and across the world to be to bully proof their school to bully proof their family to bully proof that because it's basically what I told you about my story I don't want anyone to have to go through that crap and have to result in physical violence although that is necessary if you need to do it yeah do you agree like my you mentioned that with the bullying stuff which I find fascinating and you've gone through it um martial art you said that you you learnt martial arts and you just said then that um you know for you know ideally you don't want it to get physical but it you know Sometimes you play the cards, you get dealt sometimes, right? Yeah. I guess my question is, all three of my kids do, uh, they do jujitsu. And um, I put them in when they were younger and my mindset was, it was like they learned to swim and they learned to do self-defense, right? Great. Um, and my mindset was never learn self-defense because I wanted them to be able to fight people. It was more about that bullying piece and having confidence and growing up and going, okay, and this is what I've learned about martial arts, that... The fact that they learn the skill that they can protect themselves gives them the confidence that when someone approaches them and they're, you know, and they're not ready for it, that they know how to handle that to avoid a fight. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the fact that they can fight allows them to have the confidence to make the right decision because when you get confronted, it's normally fight or flight, right? So, so in, when you get trained as a martial artist, you get trained to be able to, you know... Choose. Uh, so, yeah, choose the calm between the chaos. And, and because you can fight... From my understanding, it, it, it means less, you know, it's, you're unlikely to fight because you don't need to. Does that mm. make sense? That makes you so can sense. diffuse the situation because you can stand there with confidence and say, hey, let's let's diffuse it, opposed to panicking, and, and you start throwing your arms around because someone's coming at you. So I, I guess my question was, um, when you did martial arts, was that, um, that was obviously your first mindset, I'm assuming, was because you wanted to come through their asses. But <laughs> as time went on, is that, was that more of your experience? You didn't actually come through anyone's ass, but you got this self-confidence to be able to move through life. And, and when Brucey's going, oh, look at you or whatever, you can just continue to walk with confidence knowing that there's nothing this guy can do. It, do, it really just doesn't matter. And you could, does that, am I making any sense? Uh, it makes total sense because... There's an old phrase that says you can only fight the way you train. So if you have no training, that means you have an empty vacancy spot, vacant spot in your ability to handle that, that situation. Situation. You, you're literally, by definition, defenseless if you have no training or operating system in you to be actually combat that. It's, it's like having a house with you know, no doors or windows. That's how defenseless you are. And everyone's an easy target. That's what I say. Every, every one of us here, especially you put yourself on the internet, we're easy targets. Someone just put their Lord of the Rings ring on, go invisible and try and comment and say what they want. But you have no line of defense of your identity, then that's for sure. And the hope is that if you learn this stuff, you never have to use it, but you're, you, you got it there. That's, that's the goal, right? So the, the number one thing as a martial artist is you never want to have to use it, right? If you can get through life without using it, that's the goal. Yeah. Opposed to, I think, when people from the outside looking into martial arts can quickly go, oh, I'm going to learn that because I'm going to go kick their ass. But that's not the strategy. That's not the right. Um, yeah, the strategy is I'm going to learn that so I know how to diffuse the situation or I know how to handle the situation under extreme pressure and I can protect myself should I need to. Yeah, and a lot of dojos have that philosophy straight away. It's like you did not use this for anything else. Yeah. By self-defense. If you if we find that you've instigated a fight, you're out of this dojo. Yeah, you're out of it. Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Matt, I'm, you know, I love this stuff and, you know, the app sounds amazing and it sounds like timing is right for it you know um i'm raising young kids they wow. haven't got into that world yet totally i've got two you know young young ones at school and two in uh two in kinder Fuck, how but that? one two three four, four. <laughs> where's a, yeah, geez, a few oh, there. <laughs> anyway so there's a few there so but so and they'll hopefully be able to protect each other but um but what i'm what i'm thinking of what what sort of influence on the app and you know this you know the educational piece of it is around like the social media and you know that that element is that playing a role because this is I feel like it's a moving target yeah it is i think we've got to be very principle driven in education because the tactics change all the time because the platforms change yeah. what i mean by principle driven is that the principle of resilience and how do we actually take a hit so conditioning yeah. so one of the exercises of social kung fu is to build resilience, you need to be able to beat the bullies to the punch. So if I put things online on myself, there's an exercise in our course on the app that will say, well, what could people say about that straight away? 
and see that M&M preparing seven, yourself. It's for like Eminem him. in in uh, Seventh Mile or whatever when you he got does. It, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. When he stands there and he just disarms him by everything that he was going to wrap back. He just, at him. just acknowledges his yeah, own I'm weaknesses trash, and takes that yeah. power away from him. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, absolutely. So that's one of the first exercises young people need to do, and we guide them through that exercise. It's a great one. So we we break it into tables. Physically, what would you bash yourself with? I'm Asian. I'm short. Blah 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 blah. Okay, interests. It gets more invisible. Uh, what are you into? You gamer? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, you're a nerd. You're wrestling. Oh, sh- yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it gets into your um, past. Then it gets into your um, your beliefs. Then it gets into all these categories. It's like I'm doing a PR exercise on... That's what I do for my clients. So I do a profile background and you have to identify where you're, where someone could target. And then you need to input what you think you are. And then you need to input what maybe a spiritual overview of that is. If the gravest conceivable being looked at this, a fair judge looked at this, do you think it's fair, your assessment? Do you think it's fair of their assessment of you? Is it really fair to say that you're ugly? It's like, oh, the society says that, because that gives the person, again, choice. They've got this great spreadsheet table of society's views, bullies' views, their view, and a kind but fair judge view. Impartial, yeah. Yeah, and that's one of the exercises. So that's a principle-driven way to educate. And then we apply it to tactics with, well, someone, you put a video of yourself up talking about your passion and someone says you're a bitch or you're a dickhead or we're easy targets. Well, you prepare for that punch. Did it hurt? Is it okay to feel hurt? Yeah, it's okay to feel hurt. Is it true, but? Yeah, just because they said it, that's why I say to my kids, oh, who cares? I say just because such and such said that does not make it true. Yeah. yeah. And I just drill that in. I go, it's just... That's what we're testing with the University of Sydney research is do the students understand if I get them to actually put in the data entry of what they believe and what the bully believes and all that, that will help them feel that choice. It's like, oh yeah, they can actually do say, yeah, I, I don't know who they are. That's, I don't care about what they have to say. There's a process to help move people to get to the point of, and conditioning I don't care and, about that. Yeah, it's conditioning them as well. And it's like anything, when you break it down and you're, when you have to write anything down, you have to take it out of your head. You have to really articulate it correctly. So you can <clears throat> have fleeting thoughts about what you think the Billy, the bullies are thinking about you or what they're saying or fleeting thoughts about what you think or the partial. But until you actually have to verbalise it or put it down and articulate it, then it becomes a, a lot more real. And I think, yeah, that makes a total amount of sense that then it's almost conditioning them to be ready for when it comes and it's not a shot. You got it. You got yeah. it. So yeah, that's, that's just one of the nine modules we go through. That's crazy. And this is all going to be evidence-based, which is, which, you know, this obviously isn't my arena, but I think the things you look at out there, a lot of people can just do things based on, you know, the way the platforms work. You don't have to tick a certain amount of boxes to have a YouTube channel and and say your opinion, but to have something that's evidence-based and gets that tick, um, sounds like it could be pretty powerful. Yeah. I think um, we have to, I think today, the, the day and age of everyone can have their own view on what your diet should be or how you should fight or how you should respond to things is it's becoming quite serious now because you've got even podcasts like Stephen Bartlett's and you've got all that. Their guests they're bringing on is completely different views to the last guest they had on. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, you got a vegan on there once, you've got a meat carnival on there and they could just show perspectives, but these are all experts. So it's like really hard to be able to decipher what... That's why evidence base is so important because it's like at least there's been a peer reviewed objective. I'm not attached and not biased to this to test this out because God, like you, I mean, with your, with your expertise too, like how many people can just get up there and you got the 18 year old um, developer who's trying to give tips to things. It's like, yeah, well, you know what? Coffee Zilla was talking about this in a recent video about the, the danger of podcasts for that reason, right? Because mm. for I'll give you an example. So you come on as the expert in branding guy, hypothetically, right? Yeah. That's you. We're going, we're gonna get we're gonna get Nathan, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get Matt and we're gonna bring him on because he's the fucking expert in yeah. branding. Then we bring him on and we start talking about education because the conversation goes that way. And then Oh, th- this is just a hypothetical scenario. And then, then Nathan's on a podcast, so he needs to stay in the conversation. So he engages in having an opinion about the education system and where that's going or something completely irrelevant that he's not an expert in, but he's sitting there in a public forum, professional thing, presenting as an expert because he's being framed as an expert by the host who's taking him down a different road and instead of not answering it and saying, hey, I, I don't know anything about this shit, I'm the branding guy. He sits there and goes... 
yeah, yeah, well, I agree. Like, he's got uh, some kind of informed opinion. And then all of a sudden, you, you, like you said, all this unverified information is being spread uh, as truth and stuff. I thought it was fascinating. I watched it. It was only a six-minute video the other day. Mm. And I thought it was kind of explaining that exact same thing. Yeah, we need good guides more than ever. Information's really important, but you can't alone... Information alone can't answer your tailored questions and you can't ask your questions, you can't ask your questions. You've got to test the source. So guides are really important, but we need to validate. We need to check the checker. Like, who's talking about this stuff? Um, talk about branding for a second, like what you said about branding. I had this thought the other day, boys, and this could be a bit controversial for the podcast. Oh, yes, so hey. Bonnie, clip it, Bonnie. Um, I'll start with the, the, pro, the premise first. A logo is only as got a logo is only as strong and as good as the story it's connected to. Let me say that again. A logo is only as strong and as good as the story it's connected to. And this, and I believe the strongest logo and the strongest personal brand that has lasted for 2,000 years is Jesus Christ. The cross is the logo. And you see a young man or young woman with a cross around their neck, and automatically, it's, it's, it signals what? A certain type of behavior, a certain type of ethics, a certain Beliefs. type of belief. Yeah. If you see a logo, a Nike logo, on a really unhealthy person. <laughs> yeah, he's been to Bali. <laughs> <laughs> you can wear that as a fashion piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But does that logo stand for that behavior? Yeah. It doesn't discriminate, maybe. It's like you can, anyone can buy our stuff if you can afford it. Mm. But the ideal of this Nike logo is high performance. Mm. The best, LeBron, Jordan. For the cross, it represents, you know, it's meant to represent forgiveness and a man who came to heaven or earth to be able to help save the world, right? And died for what he believed in. Whether the person who wears that cross on their neck is behaving in that way is another thing. Whether the person wearing the Nike shoes or not is is but exercising the way that it was made for that's another thing but isn't it just so profound that the the symbol is nothing without the story it's just a crop it's just literally a a plus signal oh it's it's yeah it's a plus it's, single where he forgot to lift his fucking pen yeah <laughs> it's extremely basic if if left without the story yeah like everyone got that's how one of the cruelest ways that, that's he, a great, well, many I've never people heard anyone explain that before that's a really yeah good analogy yeah, and I believe that with Virgin and, and Branson. I believe that with Gates and Microsoft. I believe that with Boris and Yellow Brick Road. I believe that with Beachley and what she's doing. Like, it always is as strong as the story it's connected to. And whether you have a personal brand representing that story or you have to borrow people's stories and pay them to use it, Nike are credible. Like, I break personal branding into two areas. Credibility and relevance. You can be relevant, but not credible. You can have heaps of followers on social media. You can be in maths for a while and be mm. popular. I don't respect you. Because you haven't built shit. You haven't built anything to actually earn that. So you've got to use that attention and that relevance to build something credible. And credible is when you have awards, when you have built solid business that regardless if you're known or not, I'm, not, I'm successful in my own right, but one needs the other because you can be credible, but not known but a great singer in an empty stadium mm. and you can be relevant, but not credible. And you're living gig to gig. You're not an entrepreneur. If you don't have an offering like that, if you're an influencer and you have lots of followers, and you don't have an offering, you're not an entrepreneur. You're just, you're just living gig to gig. So we need both. Mm. And there's, there's really three things. I believe that people aren't successful. They're really not successful because there's three things. One, you're not good enough. So your marketing's not good enough. Your offering's not good enough. Your service isn't good enough. Or you're not known enough. So people who don't, aren't aware of you, you could be good enough but not known enough. And the last thing and the third thing is you're not clear enough. It's not clear why you're different. It's not clear of your offer. It's not clear um, your value proposition. Your message is terrible. Most people's messages are so unclear. They couldn't tell me why they're different from their competitor. Why Ray White over um, uh, McGrath? Like, what's the difference? They both sell bloody houses and stuff. <laughs> You know what I mean? Why, why are McDonald's over? The, why Pepsi over Coke? Like that's these big brands have nailed that difference through story, 
through all these things that aren't as copyable. Yeah, yeah, you can copy the the shape and the logo and stuff. And in the it really, colors. yeah, in the colors and stuff. That's I'm glad that we've uh, pivoted to the personal branding because I know or, or branding, but I know personal branding is your is your uh, specialty. And um, the people that have been following along at home know that we've been working on, or this year we're slowly starting to work on Pete's personal brand. What, yeah, what go, Pete. yeah, what kind of tips can you give us? And um, is there any stories you can tell us about? Because um, I know you, you, you've, you've, you've discovered celebrities and you've built them up from nothing and told those stories. Yeah, can you lift up the hood on maybe one of those journeys and potentially tell me and Pete exactly step by step what we need? <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> so there's five levels to personal branding. Bonnie, clip it. There's five levels to personal branding. First level is the in-house expert. So you could be an amazing worker and expert but you're not known outside the four walls of that uh, organization. So it'd be the best real estate within Ray White, the best accountant within your whatever accounting firm. And then we move up to local hero. So within your area code, now you're getting a bit of a reputation that you might win a local award. Yes, local leads. Then you move up to regional leader. So this could be Sydney, you know, um, Queensland, or a big chunk of it. And now you're starting to attract leads and attention and name for yourself regionally. That's great. Then we're up to the fourth level, which is micro celebrity. And micro celebrity is a really great place to aspire to be if you're an expert because you are the sought out person for your particular niche or your particular service. So name, like here's an exercise, name seven toothbrushes. Can you name seven toothbrush brands? Colgate. No. We need the poo. No, not seven. <laughs> no. seven. Seven real estate agents, you probably could because you're developing. Yeah. But seven accountants. You still struggle though. You still struggle. Yeah, still and how many bloody are there in Australia? Yeah. Tens of thousands. How come I can... You struggled actually before just quietly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you came out with Ray quiet. You came out hot with Ray White. And then there was... Ooh, so, like, <laughs> so it's like if there's so many people out there that... Uh, there's, say there's 100,000 people real estate agents out there how come i can't think of only i can only speak of four you know and that's those micro celebrity things it's like the first person that comes to mind is that micro celebrity they've they've had enough exposure in front of you we i have this formula it's called the six the 24 uh, it's 24 hours and seven touch points so so there's this formula that um says uh there's this there's this study that says that you need at least eight hours time spent with somebody eight hours spent with somebody to get to know them to become an acquaintance with somebody. So this is, Professor Dunbar, this is Professor Dunbar's research. He said it takes about zero to eight hours or seven hours to become a friend's acquaintances. So you need at least seven hours of content to become from a stranger to an acquaintance. Now, Zero Moments of Truth was a research done by Google where they looked at everyone's search history and looked at how many touch points does it take to be able to buy someone from someone from from scratch and it was 10.7 so about 11 touch points and seven hours of content to be able to be memorable and to be able to lead them toward a sale and most people don't have seven hours of content most people don't have seven touch points and that micro celebrity thing is yes i when i think when i say the word real estate agent i'm one of the top seven or top three and the top one the fifth one obviously is household name so you've got to look at where you're at in that level. That's where we're taking PK, mate. Yeah, we're going to take that head <laughs> and put it all over New he York. He fucking hates it. <laughs> we can do that for you. Now, um, so like you've got to look at where am I at right now in the, in the levels? Am I local? Am I regional? You know, I've won an award. Was it a local award? Was it a regional award? Was it a national award? I just won Young Entrepreneur of the Year you for did, Sydney. You did. Congratulations, for, um, man. For yeah. media. So that's a regional award. That's not a national award. So there's these things you have to earn in terms of credibility, to be able to increase that personal brand, to be able to earn that right to say, the RBA is bull crap with the decision. Yeah, 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 you, yeah. You, to, yeah. You can carry that weight. Would you agree that your perception is out in front and you need to always keep your, when, when it comes to branding, whether it be personal or whatever, but me and Pete have sort of spoken about this before where we feel like our perception is always in front of us and we're always chasing it down. We're like trying to grow into it. We're trying to grow into it. Always constantly feel like we're growing into this uh, perception. And we just went through, I know you're good friends of Dane as well from uh, Rival. And uh, we went through that process with Dane. And I feel like, yeah, so it's just going through that process and minor little tweaks with the brand and understanding and total. Yeah, it's, is, is that 
how yeah. it works? So I, I'm, you're going to love this analogy. I call this the, pers- the house of personal branding. Oh, so that. you've done the first level with Dane. First level. And that's the hardest and most expensive level to be frank. It's your message. It's your point of difference. It's your philosophy. It's your values. That stuff can't be copied. Like that's the uncopyable part, the soul of your brand. And if you skip that part, then you're building a house on sand, not rock. It's going to fall down. So if you skip the brand part and go, oh, it's too bloody expensive. That exercise is painful. I'm just going to wing it. Then you're just going straight to the next level, which is content and creation. And you're like, what am I basing it on? Yeah. I'm trying to find my identity on the run. I've been there. You're making it up. And then there's no consistency because you're relying on your memory on what you did eight pieces of marketing assets ago or or maybe what well, there's something that works on one kind of asset doesn't flow onto the other so then you end up creating something to make that work and then i can tell you you do that long enough and you end up with a debacle you end up with a confused audience correct when you confuse you lose yeah right you can't bore people into buying you can't confuse people into that like clarity is everything especially when you're saturated with everything so you need to invest heavily into brand because that's the uncopyable part that gets you super clear on what to create. Once you know who you are, you know what to do. So you go then from the foundation of brand and story and what makes me different to now let's publish. Let's publish my story, let's publish my IP, let's get all this frameworks together, let's give value, let's be the god, not the hero. If you're the hero, then you're just a sleazy real estate agent going, you wanna buy a watch? You wanna, wanna buy a knife? And it makes it look like you're an egotistical bastard, right? But like when you're a guide, you want everyone to win. You're sharing generously. And what that does is, bro, guys, is like when you make the mistake of skipping brand and you just publish, then you're going to have seven, seven audience groups that follow you for different reasons. But when you're clear on what you want, you're building this solid following. Which like is you guys highly are. engaged. Highly well. engaged, highly yeah. quality. That comes because of brand. And then from publishing, you need to start... Um, you need to package it all up. So now you're building, publishing creates an audience. The input is content. The output is audience and that engaged audience. Now you, give, you need to give them an offer. So if you're a personal brand like you, Pete, and you've got, is it Pete? Yeah. Yeah. And you go, I've got a company alongside my brand. It's Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do this to me, bro. Sorry, Don't do this right I have now. To do it. Sorry, sorry. So if you're a personal brand and you're building it alongside the, um, the company, then we've got to web in those, use your personal brand to get people into the offer. So if it's an information night or if it's um, your five steps to success or whatever it is, but it's funneling traffic because we have to build traffic to somewhere. We have to then convert them. Then we have to deliver it. So your part, that personal brand is part of that traffic attraction piece. It's the top of the funnel, right? It's, it's the, the very, very top of the funnel, man. That's where people fall in love with, brand, uh, with people, not brands, from you know, my research. You know, so people in that being the case, you know, the the top of the funnel, that's where they go, oh, that's Pete, I recognize him, he's got the story, he's got the seven hours of content, whatever. So they fall in love with the, the, the message, and then they fall in love with the messenger. So you trust, what, what, give me that PK. You trust the messenger when you trust the message. Yeah, that, that's that, right. Yeah, correct. And, and same for the Jesus Christ analogy. Like it's, it, it's you trust the man. If there's the man, the message and the mission. Right. If you had the message in the mission, but without the man, man, the mission, man you actually man. don't. It actually lays dormant. You yeah. really, really need the right man or the right person to be able to take the risk and martyr themselves potentially for this cause. I believe in this so much that every Australian and needs to have this this framework for great analogy, man. Because yeah. that's what this guy does, man. We just believe in taking development to the everyday people. When we got into it seven, eight years ago, what no one could do it. It was a secret. It was out in the suburbs, particularly in Melbourne. Yeah. And we came in from the start and said, you know, let's just take it to the people. Like we just made a shit ton of money. This is crazy. Why doesn't anyone teach this stuff or show people how to do it? And that's what we're doing. And Pete has been a martyr for the cause and, and I joke around and wind him up, but Pete's not the kind of guy that wants to be fucking, you know what I mean? Like he's not out here trying to be a micro celebrity, if that kind of makes sense. That's not the goal. But at the same time, we're trying to build a you know, a business and we've got our mission, our million people that we want to educate and help sort of thing. So, and to yeah. do that, Pete's martyred himself. And, 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 and I sit here and I say, I appreciate it. Like people out there can see how much I love Pete, but like I appreciate that because I couldn't do that. Does mm. that make sense? It's not, for, it's not my, I don't know. It's just, I just, it's, I'm not comfortable. I don't even know why, but Pete, Pete seems to just, you know, 
You just don't think about it. Just bites the bullet and says, Benny, let's do it, man. Like well, The mission is bigger, like you said. Yeah. And he does understand that that's how people are connecting. They're connecting through him, through his story, through his knowledge, his expertise, and through the value that he's sharing. And that's how we've sort of built the business. So you're spot on, man. And anyone out there listening, like this advice is just, yeah, it, it's, it's critical. And I think, uh, I know we're good friends with Adam. Uh, he comes to mind, Bandura. Like he's starting to figure all this stuff out now, right? Mm. And it's a good one for him because he needs to be the man. He needs yeah. to he needs to put himself up there and be that guy, whether you that be the man, the, po- the, po- the, the, man, the message, the mission. The, yeah, correct. The man, man, the message, the mission. Yeah, and that's what he's doing, but it hasn't been articulated to him. We haven't even figured that out. Yeah. But now sitting here talking to Matt, you know, you can see with someone like him, it's very clear what he needs to do. He yeah. needs to be Adam Gillett, the boat guy. Well, correct. And that's move away e- from Bundera Boats and, and be Adam Gillett. Well, it's, then- e- it's easy to think that the message and the mission, I've got that sorted. Why, aren't, why isn't it working? Yeah. What's going on? Or if it is working, you want it to no work one, more. There's no yeah. one to connect well, with. Well, a message needs a messenger. Yeah. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got to be able to preach. This is why the the Jesus analogy is so good. Just even yeah. if you're not religious, you have to be to be the messenger of your mission and your message. You have to be articulate. You have yeah. to be in front of crowds. Yeah. You have to be that front front man. And like the Bible talks about um, how the church is a body, and there's many parts of a body part. Some are seen and some are hidden. Some are internal organs, but without them, it would sh- it shut off. We couldn't breathe without the lungs, but we can't. We don't sing songs about the lungs, right? Oh, my <laughs> lungs. The eyes get the, the, the eyes and the smile get the, the... But we've got to, when we're in a, an organization or in a team like you guys or in my companies, it's great when everyone votes and says, it makes total sense. You, when I don't see you here and you're out there, we're winning. We've got a good shot. He's preaching. He's bringing it all in. Feed and lead. Feed and lead. That's what you got to do. I'm going to get some t-shirts, mate. Yeah. <laughs> That's good stuff. You'll see PK in the stuff. feed and lead teeth. Yeah, so from there, you, you productize. So you're like making an offer around that brand. So it's like speaking maybe for personal branding or um, you, you're putting an event on because your face is being known to gather traffic around something or it's your own personal offerings as a personal brand. It's separate from your company. And then from that, you build your profile. So now you've like got a message, you've got publishing, you're productizing, and then you've got all that for PR to be able to um, help speak about you because the most powerful way to be presented to the world is when someone else says how good you are. Spot on. Yeah, spot on. Yeah, so that's important. Well, that's but how got- Google works, right? When that's someone else links to your website, that's someone else putting up their hand saying, this person talking about this topic that I'm an expert on is true and correct. That's right. But PR and, and the third, pe- third party, they need an angle. They need actual yeah. material to go. Like if I ring up, they need intrigue. If right? I ring up my mate Laney to... from Forbes, the CEO, and go, hey Laney, I've got these guys. Let's get him in Forbes. He'd be like, cool. What's the angle? What have they done? So it, you have to have done the work yeah, before yeah. this. And the top piece is partnerships. So with personal branding, why I love this so much is it. It leads to individual opportunities like me, like working with Janine Ellis, working with. Um, some of these clients that we're going to have to come back and unpack how that all came yeah. about. She's you know a legend in the Australian business. She she is like the I thought she hates this because she's like oh that means I'm older. It's like you're the mother of business owners. I, I, I do. I think that's there's some truth to that. Yeah. That's well said. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Couldn't agree. So just an example of that is um you've got to use like you'd be like well I'm not Lane Beachley and I'm not these people Matt you've mentioned. You've got to, like I said, start with what you have in your hand. A lot of people don't think they're credible at all, but if you've got a business and you've been around for 12, 24 months or through, you're actually more credible than you think. You've got knowledge, you've got skills that got you where you are. And we've got to start somewhere. That's why I talked about the five levels. And we have to keep building upon that to be able to, to build a successful personal brand. So I've got people from celebrities like Lane Beachley. He was a seven-time world champion surfer. And that's her credibility. No one can take that, that away from her. But her challenge was, I'm not relevant. I'm, I'll always be a, a credible retired athlete. But I've got things I want to do outside of this. I want to be in the well-being space. I want to be in the health space. But I don't know how to get there. Matt, help me. So I'm like, okay, surfing's very different to those things. So how do we actually transition over to that way? Now we have to start again at the bottom of the funnel. Of the, of the process of brand. So let's talk about the war stories. Let's talk about your mental health battles. Let's talk about how you're adopted yourself. Let's talk about 
all the uncopyable things about her life that she struggled with being a seven time world champion gave her the material to talk about well-being gave her the material to talk about well i was an athlete so i had to look after my body you build, now, you build the credibility out yes build yeah. flesh out the credibility to match the new marketplace mm. because now she's she's 50 now so i was at her 50th birthday party last year it was a mexican themed i've sit, I suited it because i don't know it was great mixy <laughs> asian and and she said um yeah, I'm aging, so that's my audience too. My audience of who see me are aging with me, and how can we age and be healthy together? See, we're actually very aware of how I look and how I'm aging and how I appear perceptionally to tap into that market of health and well-being, even though I'm a seven-time world champion. So success for us was after a few years, she had followership of maybe 21,000 on Instagram, and a few. Left. she's up to 106 or 108,000 now, very highly engaged on on socials and hosted her first well-being TV program last year on Channel 10. And that came as a result of a lot of the work we've been doing with Lane because we positioned the message away from athletes into well-being and then she was the first to come to mind to be a host for the show. Yeah, that's right. Science, isn't it? It, it? There is some science behind it, but it's like it takes a guide like us. Like I'm, I'm like the, the personal branding sensei. So I, what I do is... I can spot gold. I'm like, that's usable. That's not. That's usable. That's not. And then we put in a plan and we execute it with those five things I talked about. It's very individualized. I think, and where you're starting, you start from you know step one, and you're not trying to create something that isn't there as well. You're taking their own personal experience. Bang. Yeah. So that makes it so hard to copy because people, so many people, trying to sell things that not that they don't exist, but that, that there's not a lot of substance to it. If if you're if, where you start with, with step one with their, their personal story, it's it's all real and, and they can relate to it and it's and it's there. Yeah. That, and then you build, you, you pick out the gold and you find the gold and then build on that. What pisses me off the most, man, is when I've seen courses or people online who are regurgitating word for word someone else's framework mm. or someone else's knowledge. Like I, I've, I've seen this course with one time and... Uh, this person was just spitting Tony Robbins word for word and selling her own course. I was like, that's, that's the most disgusting thing ever. <laughs> they probably don't even understand what they're doing either. Yeah, well, it, it, there's nothing new under the sun. I get that. But if you, if you don't connect it to yourself and it's not from your real life experience, it, it, it loses that substance. You're right. And we know that... People, um, people eventually start to see through that. We speak a lot about authenticity. Like you have to be real and you have to... You've got to be able to connect with people um, to really force it, or not force it, but to really build trust and, and cut through. And, yeah, cut cut through. That's right. You got to trust the messenger. Yeah. Um, can I ask a question about one of uh, your clients? Yeah. So I've been doing a bit of research. Yeah. So Erin Deering, correct? Yeah. So she's one of your clients. Now, can you talk us through what you were, what you did with Erin and and that journey? Because she's killing it, man. She's her brand is uh, yeah her brand. She's obviously done well. Um, yeah, so can you... Yeah, Erin Daring is the co-founder of Triangle Swimwear. So she was like the genius behind gift marketing. So she just um, basically they had no budget to be able to pay big celebrities to wear their swimwear. So she decided to gift all of Kendall Jenner's friends swimmers around Kendall and that created FOMO in Kendall. And then she reached out to Erin and said can I get a pair? And she posted on Twitter and blew up in America and her company was worth 200 million US triangle. And she exited, uh, she sold and she was the third richest woman under 40 in Australia. And she's still under 40 now. She's, she's a wonderful person and a dear friend of mine um, now. And so Erin and I did a strategy session around a personal brand because she was interested in doing mentoring and consulting and, and maybe doing a business academy kind of style thing. And we we fleshed it all out, we did the whole exercise, what I talked about. And she said, at the same time, I've actually got a book deal that I'm writing my memoir with. So I need to be able to get that book out there and they'll build my profile. It's like easier said than done. Books have a shoestring budget for marketing. I think we had 400 bucks for a book launch. <laughs> I mean, how are you meant to be the best seller without that? So. Her marketing genius, our resources, we did giveaways, we did a whole bunch of stories from the book, 
Um, we were on podcasts, we got PR, like it, she was everywhere uh, during this time because it was so intentional what we're trying to do. And um, to her credit, she put her money where her mouth is and resourced this all properly. She does things very properly, didn't shortcut anything. And that's why she got the best results. And as a result of that, she got number one on Booktopia um, in pre-sale, which is amazing. And she's in every bookstore across Australia. And she's on Vogue, she's in all these places that you're meant to be when you're in that fashion industry. And it's all a result of her story, again, from the memoir and just packaging it right and publishing it right and being in the right places. And um, she went from 20,000 something followers to like 40,000 a few months or something like that. It was just exponential growth across most channels. And um, yeah, as a result of it, we uh, man I manage her speaking gigs. So like, you know, she's getting five figure speaking gigs, you know, from this as well. So it's great. It's, this is the result of when you, when you have a good story and you've got the credibility, but you've got to use it in the right way. So it doesn't come across. Uh, look at me. Look at me. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just been accurate of what happened rather than saying, oh, I'm trying to prove myself. She has a real strong, like the mission, the man, the man, the message, and the message is so key for her. Her message, we crafted with her. So what can you give us, yeah, high level? What was the, can you give us, break those, so the yeah. man, yeah. So the message has to be about a pain point and a pain relief. And her struggle, personal struggle, is she didn't have any self-care and it's all documented in a book. Like she had an eating disorder, she was earning millions of dollars but um, was using those millions of dollars to be able to fill up a void in her life. And it was through my process of saying, hey, you were, a, you were insecure before you became a millionaire. Now you're an insecure millionaire who has a million dollars to be insecure with. <laughs> so it's being able to spin it that way to go like, listen, I've been to that place where you think money will solve you things, but we're helping come up with phrases, even simply to taglines to go like, once you solve your money problems, you're left with problems that money can't solve. Yeah. You know, and she had that. She, and so she articulated that. She shared stories about how she used to try and fix her insecurity with buying clothes and things like that. And she's a bit, now she's a self-care queen. She's a self-love, self-care queen. You can have self-love and success. And that was the whole process of the branding piece that we went through. The biggest thing I love about it was we're able to articulate. You can have success and self-care. It's not one or the other. But there is a narrative that you can't have success. You can only have success if you divorce yourself from actually loving yourself because it requires you to, to put your family last, put yourself last. And that was the big message that I'm really proud of with working with Erin. And that's what I love about my job is creating the mission and message with people. Yeah. Have, have you have you done any discovery where you've discovered, you know, where you, just in random places or something where you've sort of seen someone? Being a personal brand guy, I feel like you walk through the world looking at people going, dude, you could you look like you... All the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see gold in people all the time. I mean, that's my gift. That's the word. They're, they're, you've, yeah, see gold in people and you can sort of see through and go, this will work. This story will resonate in this market. So have you, yeah, so have you, I guess, through your journey, have you identified any yourself where they haven't even, they haven't even started their journey and you're like, hey man, have you ever thought about doing I, I'll even give you a staff example. So in Newcastle, I ran this workshop with um, these young entrepreneur, it was called like Young Entrepreneurs Club, Council paid me. And all these kids came along for free. And there was this one guy named Jasper. And he was this introvert, handsome young guy, 19 or 20 years old. And he was quiet and didn't say a word. And he came up to me at the end of the class. He said, hey, man, I just want to show you this thing. And it was this amazing motion graphics thing for his chicken shop that he works part-time at. And it was like raining chicken legs. And it was all this crazy shit. And I'm like, this guy's crazy talented. <laughs> he has no idea how good he is. I said, hey, how would you like a job? He's like, what? Then when I started an agency in Sydney from Newcastle, I was like, um, I rang him and I'm like, I'd love to, for you to uh, be our editor. He's like, oh, I've never done it before. I'm like, it doesn't matter. I reckon you can grow into it. And um, he said, I'm choosing unis. If you offer me a job, I'll choose Sydney uni so I can work with you. I said, great. So he moved for me or yeah. part of the reason for me. And two years later, he's doing commercials for Amex. 
this 22 year old he's doing the he's doing the wallabies campaign that's being shown at the stadium and i'm like that is the most beautiful thing yeah, that's pretty is and you just he had no idea well he had the talent but sometimes we're only a certain piece of our own puzzle you know and and we've got to like, listen he's, he's a very physical philosophical exercise pete can you see what you look like right now yeah can you really can no, you actually not, see not your face <laughs> <laughs> no but i could if you wanted me to yeah. but, but what would you need in there. a mirror you would need a mirror yes so you you can't actually see yourself no without a reflection nope. i can only see a percentage of my body so why the hell do we think that we can actually see our potential by ourselves Just, so we need others we need others yeah. you need someone to go sometimes it's like your father i see this you don't see it or it's your boss mate you don't see it but i believe if you did this with me i would unlock something in you mm. how many people in our lives if we had someone say like maybe or someone virtually put that belief in you and they're like oh wow that that belief in me is way more than my current belief in what and it, i'll say this across anyone who's successful ever worked with had a greater belief in what they wanted to achieve than their current reality. People say, like, you can't do that. Like, Janine, you can't open 100 stores in four years and boost juice. Like, well, oh, yeah, you don't have any business experience. You're a single mum. You're a mum with three kids. So, but that belief in her and others for, in that helped to get there. Yeah. Can I ask, can I ask a question about Janine? Because, I, I mean, I'm, a, I'm a, a shark tanker from way back. What's, what's maybe one thing you could tell us? Because like, I think it's... A, we all agree that she would be, yeah, she's one of the goats of Australian business. What's a, having worked with her now, launched a business, gone through that process, sounds like you're a bit of a sounding board for her as well. But what's one piece of advice or something that you've learnt that, um, from working with Janine that, that you treasure or, or that's been you know, pivotal? Deep question. There's so much. Janine, Janine Alice, I think is just like, like I said, she's the mother of business owners. What I mean by that is we gravitate toward our parents, particularly in times of uncertainty and for guidance. And what I respect about her is she wasn't spoon fed or she came literally from no knowledge and she did all the hard work and got burnt through the process. She shares her stories of like business partner not working or not having your logos trademarked and all this stuff. So what I respect about her is get the boring stuff right. Yeah, okay. Yep. The boring stuff. The details. The detail, like the boring stuff is like get your numbers sorted, like get your trademarked registered, get all the stuff that seems so unsexy sorted because she's seen so many businesses through Shark Tank under the bonnet of so many businesses and also in her own business where someone she's going to invest in someone's businesses but they don't know they don't own the ip for their own business yeah, yeah, that they're yeah, investing yeah. in that's the boring stuff and the boring stuff is getting a you know someone to control certain areas that you're weak in like like money and those things enable you to be able to go to bed at night and and sleep yeah. knowing that something's not going to happen bad in the night so I know that I've worked with other business owners which don't have as much knowledge as she does from the ground up because they didn't start from the ground up they bought in at already an established place. She could yeah. literally walk into a store right now and so move this around, move this around. Turn it around, around, absolutely. Especially in that hospitality space. And yeah, not many people can do that. They could just give you strategy and ideas and big business ideas. That's okay. But she can actually go all the way up. So I love that about Janine. Crazy. Great advice. And a, and a great and a great business partner to be involved with. Yeah. yeah. How, do you, how did you meet? Love just quickly, like, how did you connect with Janine and convince her that you were the guy to go into business with? It's just very organic. Do you know what I love about podcasts? Likeable. Yeah, it's likeable. just uh, uh, likeable. Yeah, likeable. <laughs> I was just a likeable guy. You know? <laughs> <It's funny. laughs> this Nathan guy. Is a nice guy. <laughs> oh, that Nathan person. <laughs> um, listen, I actually met to her on my podcast. So authentic. Your next business partner might be a guest on your podcast. <laughs> what are we doing now? <laughs> well, boy, Maybe getting his out. name right before he. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, stuff you. Yeah. Um, so we met on my podcast many years ago, and we stayed in touch. Yeah, and we're, amazing. We're admirers of each other's work for years. And um, two years ago, we were just spitting ideas to each other. Going, oh, I, I said to Janine, "You look a bit bored. <laughs> what are you doing? Like, traveling to Amsterdam and snowboarding." 
you look like you live in the dream. Are you bored, aren't you? He's like, yeah, I'm helping people out. I love helping, you know, I'm helping people secretly and blah, blah, blah. But we got this idea. And we started Business Academy as a concept for business school, for schools, for unis and for schools. And then she decided, let's just do it for Australian businesses. Let's just open it up. And uh, we took 18 months to develop the content from her own experience. We took our time before we actually started the company. So we took 18 PO months. Content? It's coaching. coaching. So okay. this, their first course is four days and she's there every day. Great access to Janine with coaches that we've approved of her who have scaled and exited or MBA in business. And um, they're all frameworks that she uses in Boost that in uh, Betty's Burgers. And we've got people who are reaching out that have 40 franchises from another place or the eight, nine figures. We've got people who are just starting out. Dog. And I said to Janine, would this content suit everybody? Like, I've got pretty big people inquiring about this. And she's like, the big companies need it the most. Right. They, yeah. they forget this stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, okay. So it's all from her lived and learned experience. And we're bringing other people on as we grow the business, other, um, other legends of business to join the academy to be good guides for business owners. Yeah, that's awesome. That's it. Amazing stuff you're doing, mate. And secondly, congratulations, man, on your, you know, on your journey. You know, the journey to get to Australia and now now the splash that you're making over here. I feel like I feel like there's a real sort of genuine element to it and a helping element and an authentic mm. element to it. You know, you're not just sort of off chasing the shiny things. It feels like there's a yeah, real cash grabbing. There's some substance and depth to it, PK. Substance like the bully and depth. stuff's amazing, man. Like yeah. you know, I've got Pete, like I said before, he's got half a dozen kids. I've got my um <laughs> I've got I've got three. And yeah, when you when you have kids, it just changes everything, the way that you look at all that stuff. And um I think it's they, just they, they refreshing to hear. Yeah, it's just a different perspective. They talk about it at here? school a lot, but it seems like there's not enough or not a lot yeah. of action and it's probably because it's complicated and difficult mm. if it was easy it'd be solved right but it sounds like you've got a different look at it and some strategies that make fucking sense to me well some and some some poor pioneers in the space as well yeah. you know like some people do it something like this that you know but yeah you, you're doing it properly by the sounds because of it. I, I, th I tell you i want to just back over this because i think if you're trying to teach the kid not to bully that's it won't work because the mm. kids are kids you can't like it's just kids are going to be kids right so being able to go to the person that's getting bullied and control that and how they're receiving it that makes it just makes total it's nearly sense. like flipping you know, it lack of a but double-sided marketplace so they've got, <laughs> if, if, if the kid that's getting bullied is handled it properly it'll probably minimize and the bully because there it, won't yeah. be reaction and the bully might move on and and yeah. then suddenly the bully's getting no oxygen. What happens when you get no oxygen? You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah you got no fuel. It's deeper yeah. than just going, don't bully. Bullying's bad. Oh, that's you what, that's what bullying that's said what they I was for years. Like, bully, stop it. Yeah, yeah, like, that bully is bad. Don't bully. You shouldn't bully. Don't make sure you don't bully. That's bullying, you know what I mean? But the reality mm. is, that's the wrong message. Yeah, it's, it's it helping the people that are getting bullied just to deflect it. Yeah. 100%. Thanks Matt, for having me, boys. Matt, this appreciate. has been awesome, yeah, man. Well amazing. done, man. You're, Really authentic chat. Loved it. Yeah, we'll catch up so, again. Um, so you'll have to put Pete's uh, strategy together. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> well, when, when the strategy's done, if Dane's done it all, then it's time to build the house. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. It's still time, man. We launched. Love that analogy, man. The foundations. Talent. We only got the foundations, no, Benny. The, family, the development tank's out there. Harmon, man. We made them wait for it, and now it's out there. It's, uh, it's taken off. So, yeah. The man, the message, the mission. Let's go. Let's go. All right. And that's Matt Purcell. We're mucking around. Um, but please guys like share subscribe jump on littlefishpodcast.com.au smash that pink donation button you can't miss it Benny's got it there up there in lights so it's, it's a yeah it's a cause that we're trying to find a cure 2030 2030 I don't know is that right we're going to have a party we get the cure we're having a party and you're all coming 2030 we're getting there love it guys see you at the top Woo! People can find a better version of themselves. If they choose. Hmm. You just need to go start some shit. Action is all that matters. Be a man of your word. I think I look back now and I'm like, whoa, that took some guts. Be kind. Be kind. Be kind. See you at the top. New episode every Wednesday.